Here's another pro tip for you guys, and this one's probably the most important of all. I'm sick and tired of hearing people say clip. You're listening to these gangster rappers talking about put another clip in or empty the clip. Well, guess what? This is a clip, okay? Ammunition slides onto it like this. Some rifles, you are able to insert this and slide the rounds down into uh, the gun from the clip. Okay? It's a clip. Your rounds are clipped onto it. Stop saying clip. This is a clip. This is a magazine. You're welcome, America. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Before we get started, I'd like to point out that this video is not sponsored by any of the products that we're going to go over today, nor is it sponsored by Summit or Purpose-Built Motorsport Apparel, but it could be. We have a bit of an issue with our Trans Am as far as keeping the idle down to where it needs to be. Um, I have my own theories about some issues that may be causing this due to alignment and ports in the throttle body. And it's an old BBK unit that's got some corrosion on it and doesn't look great. So I ordered a Phytech 92mm and the adapter that will convert uh, this 4 bolt throttle body bolt up on this old Gen 3 LS, which is 3 bolt. Oftentimes people get a little overzealous about throttle body size. So it's not rocket surgery to calculate how many CFM your engine can consume. Now I went over this when we were choosing a carburetor for the square body build. And you can see that uh, there's a playlist on my channel. So when it comes to fuel injection engines, you'll have uh, a little more volumetric efficiency than a carbureted engine. So let's see why that matters. So to calculate the CFM that your engine can consume, if you will, you take the cubic inches times the maximum RPM that the engine's going to spin, and then you divide that number by 3,456. That will give you the CFM that it'll consume at that RPM. Now, the next portion of that is multiplying the number you get by the volumetric efficiency. So a carbureted engine is going to fall somewhere around 0.7 or 0.8. So you take that number times 0.7 or 0.8, and that's the real number that your engine is going to consume. Um, fuel injection engines are going to be a little higher. Um, turbo or supercharged engines can be anywhere up to 3.0 is uh, volumetric efficiency, which if they're making a lot of boost, they'll move a lot more air. So for an LS1, it's safe to say that 1.0 is the volumetric efficiency. You're not going to exceed that uh, with one without forced induction or something. So this LS1 is stock, as far as I know, cubic inches 347. It does spin to 6700 RPM. So you multiply those two together, divided by 3456, and we get 673 cubic feet per minute is what it can consume. We're just going to use a 1.0 as a volumetric efficiency, uh, so that number doesn't change. But it just gives you an idea. These guys are going out and buying these 102 millimeter throttle bodies. It's kind of bananas. Now, I do agree that you don't want that to be the weakest link. So, let's open our box from Summit that arrived today. Here's our spacer plate that we will bolt in the three bolt holes into the intake and then it'll allow the four bolt throttle body to affix to it. You can see it also tapers down to the size of the opening that's on our actual intake. Now according to Phytec, if you use one of their throttle bodies, you need to use or order this throttle cable bracket assembly thingy adjustable, etc. So we'll look at that later. We may or may not need it. But I'd rather have it and not need it, and if I need to, I can ship it back. So here's the throttle body. I went with the black anodized cast. So there's the hardware, 
We have a PCV fitting inside there, which is nice because I believe this just has a threaded hole instead of one for press in. Well, the quality of this piece looks great. It also already comes with the uh, idle air control and throttle position sensor. Idle air control, throttle position sensor. So that's pretty nice. I like this uh, somewhat a crinkled black finish uh, in case someone takes your air intake off I guess you can tell them and show them what size your throttle body is I don't know so let's point out a few things before we get started tearing this down this is that BBK throttle body it says that it's an 80 millimeter which I'm sure like we talked about is plenty I just don't really like the finish and I also don't like the way some of these holes made up to the factory intake Here's a pro tip for you today. If these nuts that are built into your intake snout turn while you're trying to loosen or tighten these bolts that hold the throttle body on, you can get a 15 millimeter end wrench and they stick out just enough you can drop that over the ends of those nuts and keep them from turning. Now we got the throttle body uh, at least pulled loose from the intake. This is the part that kind of bothers me. If you look at the way this gasket operates, it goes up and around to where this is one sealed area. And this is another sealed area with the gasket going right between the two. If you look at the back of this throttle body, it would appear that that gasket comes right down the center of this hole. Always use a little anisease, especially when the bolts are two different metals, uh, or the hardware, it's two different metals from where you're putting the screws. Uh, in this case, we'll be putting these steel screws and tightening that throttle body into that aluminum plate. So always a good idea to prevent any corrosion or rust, which is probably why those brass nuts would spin inside that intake snout when trying to loosen up the steel bolts. The throttle cable does need to come forward because as it drops into place here, placement doesn't lack much. It's kind of hard to tell where that gas pedal is doing. It's about right there, so it's only only need an inch. That's what she said. which it looks like we'll gain exactly what we need with this adjustability. So, thanks Phytech for recommending that. We're gonna use it. All right, we're gonna see if this thing will fire up and we'll do some manual idle adjustments.
obviously a problem somewhere because this throttle body is seriously sticky. And I did check the clearances beforehand, but it was almost like the vacuum of the engine is pulling it closer into wherever this interference is. So there must be a clearancing issue somewhere or everywhere in this Vitek. I thought this may be a little more helpful view for you. So I've got the flashlight behind this and you can see the light coming in around the throttle blade on the sides, but not at the top and not much at the bottom. So as soon as I let's see, for example, we'll crack this open. You can tell the light doesn't evenly get sealed out. So, makes for not awesome setting idle. So if you open these throttle blades, you can actually see right there, right in front of where my finger is, how the light's shining on that scuffed surface. So, just a little cleanup right there and should allow the blade to make a more even contact all the way around. So, a little bit of time, a little bit of elbow grease, micro fine polishing and cleaning. Should be set. Let's find out. So 1,000 RPM seems to be where it wants to idle. Everything should be good. The tune says it wants 850, so not really sure if we've got an air leak somewhere else, but I notice whenever the throttle body is closed as much as it can, the idle tries to come down, and then it's like the idle air control motor brings it back up to that 1,100, so not sure what's going on there because I'm not an expert. Mm -hmm. 